So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning on the Securing the Future Six Strategies to Develop Your Emerging Leaders. It's really lovely to have you with me this morning. So thank you so much for giving of your time on this busy Thursday. So welcome. So what we're going to be talking about today is essentially uh, developing emerging leaders, as I said in the topic, but it's also around looking at some of the strategies that organizations can use and how they can actually go about in you know, determining and growing their emerging leaders. So the presentation really today will look at various things, the webinar will look at various things, but I think some of the uh, research is really quite interesting around emerging leaders. And an example would be that the research is that 90% of emerging leaders, in terms of what the studies have been done around, need professional development in leading and managing people, and 84% need skills development in strategy and business planning. And the reason why I included that particular slide is because when you actually look at the research and what's important for the people who will be taking over the organization, it's quite strategic. It's not as if, well, you know, we need leaders for the future, so we'll just find out who we think would work and off they go. There's some real research around what should be done of the um, developing leaders or the emerging leaders and how to actually upskill them and what those things that need to be done to upskill them well will bring in terms of, a, you know, returns on investment for the organization. So I think that's an important point. Um, and the issue around the development of emerging leaders is very strategic in organizations. Is not, and I think that's one of the things I'll talk to you about in a moment is that those organizations who just use emerging leaders or decide to kind of promote emerging leaders without strategically thinking about how to do that and also most importantly to design their ongoing development make a strategic, I think, faux pas mistake around that. So we'll talk a little bit about that as I go through the webinar. And I guess the question always is when I start these webinars, I like to ask these questions. Would you like to have a group of committed and energized emerging leaders who sit at the top of the organization, as I say, in the wings, bubbling along, but being developed and grown in such a way that should anything happen, they are people who can take the organization forward. Would you like to have a plan that secures the future of your company? Now, some of you may be business owners, some of you might be executives, some of you might be people down the line, but at the end of the day, whether we're running an organization or whether we're working in an organization, we always would like to know that our organization has a plan for the future to grow and to continue to nourish and flourish. And would you like to know that when you leave, for example, a company will prosper? You know, organizations go from decade to decade to decade, and some of them go from centuries to centuries, obviously with many, many changes. But I know that those organizations that are sustained and sustainable are those organizations who really focus on growing the people waiting in the wings, and not always leaders, ladies and gentlemen. It could also be people down the line, you know, people who are working in organizations. Not everybody wants to be a leader, and I think that's a really key point. Um, but however, for those who do want to be leaders and who are going to take the organization forward, it's about so how are we going to do that strategically? And would you like to obviously believe that the future is taken care of, not only for if you leave, but also for those people staying in the organization and knowing that high flyers would be developed and kept within the organization. And it's quite an interesting term, high flyers, because a lot of people debate, well, you know, are all leaders high flyers? And maybe, maybe not, but I do believe that emerging leaders are people who need to have certain uh, skills and certain relationship capacity in order to drive organizations forward. And I actually talk about this a little bit further down in the webinar. And I think this is, um, this reminds me most mornings really of me, I think. The cost of not developing emerging leaders is just so significantly high. So if you don't have a pipeline, a business development pipeline, if you don't have a emerging leaders pipeline, in other words, people waiting in the wings or down the pipeline who can take over the organization by growing into critical positions, you leave the organization very, very vulnerable. If there's no people capable, that is, to take the company forward, it's a serious glitch in the long-term sustainability of the organization. And what's really interesting around this topic, I find, no matter where I go, is that 
There's more organizations that don't have a focus on emerging leaders and growing and developing them than those organizations that do. In other words, I would say certainly, probably in my experience working really extensively in organizations across continents, I would say that 70% of organizations do not focus on growing and developing emerging leaders, 70%. And of course, if you look at the presentation that you're looking in front of you right now, that brings amazing, amazing dangers to an organization. So some of the research that I was sort of looking at recently talks about that 50%, 58%, sorry, of medium to large organizations don't have a defined leadership development strategy. So not necessarily only emerging leaders, but leaders. In other words, not kind of strategies or no kind of plan or no sort of program in order to upskill the leaders. And if you don't upskill leaders to lead well, well, I think we all know the story about that. 51% of these organizations say their performance management processes are not effectively identifying who's ready to move up the pipeline. In other words, it's almost like organizations do what they do because they're always doing what they've always done, and so they can't continue to do what they've always done. That was a bit of a mouthful. But what I'm meaning by that is that there's no kind of strategic thinking about the future necessarily. There's no kind of really working out how to ensure that you know, we're going to move forward and that things are in place and processes are in place and people are in place to make sure that when I'm long gone, this organization will continue. And I think that's scary, particularly in the modern day sense of organizations under so much stress and pressure and challenges. And if they don't have this, it's scary. 75% of companies do not regularly conduct leadership pipeline projections to plan for future leaders. So essentially, I mean, I guess that that's kind of agreeing with the statistics of 70% I gave just now, is that we don't look at the people who are coming up the organization or we don't think about how we will develop them. And this is pretty scary. So almost 60% of organizational leaders say that they do not hold managers down the line accountable for developing or the development of future leaders. And I think that's, that just says so much. So if we're not developing future leaders, if we're not developing existing leaders, if we don't have plans and programs in place, then I ask you the question, well, what do we have? You know, what, what do we have then? And I think those are organizations who just, as I said earlier, just kind of drift along and they wait for, I don't know what they wait for, maybe better things to happen. So looking through fresh eyes, I think the important thing is what do we need to secure the future? How will we ensure our emerging leaders are properly developed? What has to happen for a meaningful pipeline to be created and followed? These are key organizational questions that people need to answer. And I will give five, five of you actually the opportunity afterwards if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one strategic review with me for any of these kind of leadership discussions, emerging leader discussions, people discussions. Unfortunately, I can't do more than five, but five it will be. So these three questions are things we need to think about. Well, should you be listening to me? There's a lot of you on the line, so I won't stay here too long. Some of you know me, some of you I know. Um, but for, and by way of very brief introduction, I'm a psychologist. I work on three continents. I run a company called Pure Magic International Business Solutions, and we do leadership and team development and have been doing that for the last oh, 20, 25 years at this stage. So I'm very passionate about the work that we do and love what we do and been doing it for a long time. We focus really on developing CEOs and senior leaders and teams. Coach a lot of CEOs, one, one and a... Australian CEO of the Year. She was actually a female called Viv Allenson. She runs an aged care facility in Newcastle, Australia. And uh, she's just the most wonderful, wonderful woman. We've won a couple of awards along the way. And I do some speaking in my career. And I work with essentially Australian Fiji government regularly um, to develop teams and leaders, but not just government. We work across community, corporates, councils, a whole range of organizations, and we work, as I said earlier, in Fiji, Australia, and Africa. So these are just some of the people with whom I work, love them all dearly, all with different backgrounds, different, you know, just lives. Um, now if we talk about, so what are the, the, the key skills of leaders? And I think this is a really important slide, actually. 
Because whether we're talking about experienced leaders or whether we're talking about emerging leaders, all leaders around the world, and it doesn't matter where, have two different roles that they have to perform in their jobs. Number one is that they have to make sure that the job is done. Now, those effective leaders will be those who will actually get people to do the work for them, i.e. they delegate well. But for those leaders who don't, they obviously then do the tasks themselves. But the second and equally important part of leadership is relationships. In fact, if some of you are familiar with the work of Daniel Goleman, who wrote Emotional Intelligence, um, Martin Seligman, who wrote Learned Optimism, these academic people are very interesting is that they talk a lot about the role, for example, that relationships play in leadership and emerging leadership. And the reason why I've got this as a slide here is that without doubt, leaders have to be competent in their roles. There's no two ways about this. But Goldman talks about the fact that the further up an organization an emerging leader goes or an existing leader goes, the more they have to have key relational capacity and competence. So the reason why I'm saying that as well is that if you're looking at the slide then that yes we know that emerging leaders have to be good at their tasks but Goldman talks about that the, the better an emerging or an experienced leader is in relationships so building harmony, motivating their people, influencing, you know, persuading, being positive, being people that the teams will do anything for, those people or those emerging leaders are the leaders who will become better at their jobs and they ultimately tend to be more effective in the roles that they have. So when we talk about what do emerging leaders need, they need a firm focus on how to relate to and motivate their people. Key skill and key slide of today. When we talk about the succession planning process, and obviously we can't talk about emerging leaders if we don't talk about succession planning because they're two of the one say, same thing. The succession planning requires taking a hard look at the business to identify its needs and opportunities. I was working with a company in Fiji last week and I was a really large organization. I was talking about business succession planning. So this particular organization does not have a succession plan and it's a very important organization in the country. And so I was talking about that we need to look at, so what does the business need? And what was really interesting, ladies and gentlemen, was that the people in the room, and there were about 30 in the room, were not really focused on what the business needs. They were focused on what, if you had to have a business succession planning, how would that impact them? How would that impact their jobs? And it took me about 15, 20 minutes for me to make them understand it's not about them and it's not about their jobs. It's about what the business needs and to identify those critical roles that we need to groom emerging leaders in tasks and relationships so that they can fill those critical tasks and ultimately take the organization forward. So I'm sharing that with you because quite often there's a confusion between, well, is it about me and my job or is it about the business and what it needs? It's about the business and what it needs without a doubt. And obviously business succession planning then is done by creating a plan that fits with the company's long-term goals and obviously people is part of that plan and evaluate the plan as needed. So, I mean, that's just a very basic, if you like, identification of what succession planning is, although it's a little bit more complicated than that. But within this concept that I've got on this page here today, obviously emerging leaders are critical. So what are some of the problems that I experienced? Number one, companies don't focus on the future. Many are in the here and the now. Not all, but many are. And by the way, I must say, I work a lot across the community and corporate and education sectors. And I would say that there would be equal representation from each of those sectors in that comment. Many focus on what we're doing today, what we've done yesterday, maybe what we'll do tomorrow, but they're not focusing on what we're going to do next year or the year after. Largely, obviously, there are some you know, exceptions to this particular comment, but overall, I would say 70% of organizations don't focus on this. Most have not given thought to emerging leaders and how to grow them, and that was in the statistics that I showed you in the second slide when I started today. That comment is supported by slide two. Others have the we'll get there approach. Never mind, Karen, we'll get there. Not to worry, Karen, in the future. The point of the matter here is that it's not about in the future or we'll get there. I often say that when I come across a leader who says, oh, well, we'll get there in the future, I actually call that organizational neglect. And what I mean by that is not to be disrespectful or to be cheeky or to be rude, 
But if you're not thinking about in a leadership position, if you've got the, you know, at that kind of level, if you've got the power to think about the future of the organization and you don't, I think that's organizational neglect. Some really don't see the need. And then, it's, you know, sometimes it takes me a while for me to explain what the need is and why they need to think about the future. And sometimes, you know, I walk away from these people and I just think they haven't listened to a word I've said. And then I'll, you know, be called back into the organization two or three years later. And I'll always remember things. And I might say, have you, you know, sort of fast-tracked the business succession planning? Oh, no, Karen, we're still getting to it. And therein lies, I think the attitude around that is the problem for me. Therein lies the the danger because we still haven't understood the need around growing our leaders. Some think they're too small. And I think whether you're big, large or small, you still need to think about some kind of emerging leaders and how you're going to treat them and develop in them future. And so when you've got those, we don't need it or we'll get them in the future, the results are that talented emerging leaders leave. Their opportunities are elsewhere. And I think that's a very, very sad it's truth, I guess, for many organizations. Critical roles are not kept full, should be full, not full, or in the pipeline with good people. And ultimately, your competitors steal your good people. I could write books about this. So good people go, and the organization is kind of there thinking, what happened there? Why did they leave? Didn't they want, you know, didn't they get enough money? Um, were they not satisfied in their roles? Was it a manager issue? I spoke at a conference about five years ago. And the topic I chose to speak on, I called buff them, polish them, shine them. Why emerging leaders are like diamonds to your business. And I'm sharing that with you because what was interesting in the research that I did before I actually designed the speech was that, for example, listen to this, Generation Y, so 18 to 33, are people who are less interested in money and more interested in the development and growth of their careers. They're less interested in work, 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 and then retire like the baby boomers. And they're much more interested in work, play, work, play, work, play. So what was really interesting in the research that I learned from that was that when we talk about emerging leaders who are younger, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a completely different trend around how they see themselves in the workplace. They don't want to be people who are kept down. They want career progression. They want growth. They want to be successful. And they want to have individual development plans. They want to see a, a clear career progression path. And they want to be treated equally. And so in organizations, if your emerging leaders fit into that, it's just really interesting and useful for you to think about actually the younger emerging leaders want different things to the older emerging leaders. And if we're in a position in a higher leadership role or in HR or talent acquisition or management, we need to get our head around what is it that these younger emerging leaders want because it's critical if we're going to then grow them and keep them. And I think very often we get seduced into thinking it's about money. It's very not about money for the younger leaders. It's more about how I can get to where I want to go, in what time, and what are you going to do as an organization to develop me? And of course, if you don't do this, obviously the organization is more vulnerable. So problem number two is HR practices and processes don't often meet the need. And I mean, that's a bit unfair to say, but I am going to say it because I do see it. Um, I think that, you know, most organizations focus on obviously policies and processes and procedures that they need. Most organizations that I have gone to don't have a defined emerging leader strategy. And I think that's a, a difficulty, as I've explained earlier in, in what I'm talking about here. Most leaders down the line, which goes back to what Slide number two says, don't identify their high flyers. So if you don't identify the high flyers and develop them, they will leave or they will be stolen. And what's worse than losing a high flyer who could have made so much impact in your organization to a competitor who really sees their value and then uses them to drive their own organization forward? Developing people is not the priority. And you might say to yourselves listening to this webinar, oh, that's not true. How can that be? I want to be very, very clear here. 
is that there are many organizations that I have worked with in the time that I have been where they will tell me that developing people is a priority. But when it comes to actually spending the, the money, spending the investment, spending the time, showing the way, development plans, it's just not there. Therefore, I don't believe that developing people is a priority to these organizations. And what happens then is that good people leave, as I've said, critical roles are left unfilled. If critical roles are left unfilled, we have a major, major danger to the organization. And I'll tell you a story just now. Or we fill it with whomever is there. Well, you know, Bob, you've been in the company for 30 years. Would you mind popping into, you know, this critical role? And whilst Bob might be able to do that in the short term, longer term planning is not there. And it's, it's a danger to the organization because, as I said earlier, fantastic human capital walks out the door. And where does the issue really lie? Well, essentially, whichever way I try to justify or to think about this, the issue lies in the executive leadership. If the executive leadership do not see the necessity to have emerging leader strategies and plans, then ultimately it will not happen and the organization can struggle. Third problem, leaders have not made looking at gaps and vulnerabilities a priority. So what is is that they, they don't really look at what, they might be looking at what the quality control issues are, they might be looking at the problems of systems and processes, but they're not looking at the inefficiencies around people. They might be looking at how can we improve products and services, but they're not looking at, well, why do we have a high staff turnover necessarily? And what are we going to do about emerging leaders? What will we do with our talent to help us with all our difficulties? Um, there's an organization that we were called into recently, which I just think is just, it's, it's, a, it's a classic example. And in one area of the organization, this, this particular company has, let me just remember, it was 48, no, 47%, sorry, a 47% staff turnover rate. Well, when they told me that, I nearly fell off my chair. And I said, why have you got a 47% staff turnover rate? Well, they're not sure. And I said, how are you not sure? And I said, okay, how long has this been there for? Well, the, staff, the, the high staff turnover rate has been there about five years. I said, so for five years, in the one area of the organization, you've had a high staff turnover rate, but you have done nothing about it. No, they say, Karen, we're getting there. Well, five years, 47%, and we're getting there. Now, what I think should have been done is that an emerging leader should have been upskilled and grown, together maybe attached to a more experienced leader and gone into that part of the organization and done something about addressing the issue. But what they have is leaders not made looking at gaps and vulnerabilities a priority, which means that often we don't fix the areas of concern, Often the same people try to gap the leaks. I mean, you'll all appreciate, and there's a lot of you on the line, is that you'll always get the same people who can be relied upon. You'll always get the same people who can be, you know, dependent, dependable. You'll always get the same people who want to contribute. And the same thing when we've got identity, you know, identified gaps in, in leadership or roles that the same people try or are asked to try to gap the leaks. We don't grow people down the line to be efficient in their roles because we're too busy doing what we're doing. Ultimately, though, people leave or retire, and then what? Well, then we've got this huge gap that says, now what? Then what and now what means that we've, we've, we've got an issue around emerging leaders and we haven't grown them in the wings. There is no doubt in my mind that identifying and growing emerging talent is the answer to every, future, every organization's future concerns. And yet, as I've said on various occasions throughout this webinar, we don't necessarily make it a priority. So it's what are the solutions if companies do not focus on the future? Identifying and growing emerging talent must be part of a strategic plan, exactly like it is to make more profit if that's the case or to secure more funding if that's the case or to get more customers or more clients as important parts of the business. So should growing emerging talent be equally important part of the business. The plan. There should be one central point needs to be responsible for executing the strategy. Very often in organizations, well, it's a great strategy and yet we're going to do it, but nobody's got the actual overall KPI or goal or responsibility for actually executing the plan. Therefore, the plan is not executed. So it's got to be strategic, it's got to be actionable, it's got to be measured. That's really key. And I think that the future of the company and its human capital has to be a focus of the CEO and the board. 
And the reason I've put it in there because I think it's that vital to an organization's overall success and sustainability. And managers down the line need to look forward for the organization and think, okay, we want to be there in three or five years. Let me see who's in the ranks who are the emerging leaders that I can actually identify as key players that we could grow and upskill in order to drive this organization forward? Deliberate plan to grow and develop the, the talent at all levels, not just, you know, leadership level. This is a great example. Um, uh, this is such an, an awesome story, and I'll just quickly share it with you. There was a catering company that we were working with about four years ago, and we were called in to help this organization's leadership. So we went in, and the, the brief was, can you develop the executive leaders, and can you help us create highly performing teams down the line? Anyway, it was a long story. It was a three-year contract, and we all of the things we said we would do, we did. But one of the things that was really interesting that, I, that we noticed when we went in there was that there was, no, there was no business succession planning. There were no emerging leaders. So you had these, let's call them 15 executive leaders, and, and there was not really a lot of development that had been done with those leaders down the line. Um, but what happened was that the people under them, they were middle managers, but there was, no, there was nothing. There was no plan for them. There was no real development of them. There was no training. There was no upskilling. Anyway, the story is that when we were in there, one of the key roles in the organization, the catering company, was the catering executive. So this person was responsible for all of the food that was being supplied to their customers. So I won't say what industry because I, I don't think that's relevant, but this role was absolutely critical. If that person left, the company would literally be on its knees. And I remember when I was... When we were in this company for about three or four months, I said to the CEO, CEO, you've got a really, really vulnerable position. If something happens to that catering executive, you're in the trouble. <clears throat> yes, Karen, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been looking at this for about three years and we've got a plan. We just haven't got it yet. And I said, well, I would like you to talk to me about this tomorrow and let's, you know, try and find somebody just in the meantime that we can upskill and somebody who is critically you know, gifted or somebody who we think we can upskill. Anyway, long story cut short, he didn't do that. And four months later, ladies and gentlemen, this executive catering director was poached. The, this person left the organization, and for the next year, that organization was literally on its knees. They looked all over the country for somebody to, to fill this position, couldn't find them eventually, um, I was out looking and eventually I actually helped them recruit somebody from overseas who's very gifted and still in the role. But it's a great example so that you understand of, you know, if we don't really think about emerging leaders and the critical role that they will play, it can lead us to real difficult times. So on this particular occasion, we put emerging leaders development plans as part of the strategic plan. We have skilled the leaders at all levels and taught them to identify future leaders. What was interesting with some of them is that they were scared to identify future leaders in case they lost their jobs. And I just thought that was interesting. So we talked a lot about the psychology of that. And, you know, it's not about them and, and their roles. It's about securing and sustaining the ongoing, you know, longevity of the organization. We helped the HR implement a business succession plan. We certainly identified key roles in the organization and then showed them how to do a development plan for each. It was a really good case study of how if we don't actually upskill emerging leaders and do everything we can to grow them, we can all be in big trouble. Number two was uh, HR practices don't really focus on the future. Gary's Homewares is obviously not the name of the, com the company here, but this particular organization, yeah, we'll do it sometime in the future. Um, there was just this kind of fear or this, this blockage to doing it. So I spent some time trying to understand what the problem was. Um, and I think one of the problems was that the CEO didn't really think it was a priority and the HR manager was so overwhelmed with things that he had to do that there was just no, no real people, I suppose, or resources to help them. So um, 
eventually I coached the CEO and I certainly made it very clear that I felt that the all the things I'm talking about, the emerging leaders needed to be looked at and HR policies needed to be updated and obviously then helped the executive and the HR develop a strategy to grow the emerging leaders. But it took time. It probably took about a year, I'd say. Um, and then I was explaining about keeping the pipeline full. And they didn't understand that, that to keep the pipeline filled was, was a priority initially, but ultimately, obviously, they did. Now they've got a robust plan in place. And when I was there probably about two or three months ago, I was delighted to see the development programs are being followed and plans are being, you know, executed for each of the high flyers or the emerging leaders. Um, this particular was another organization. Leaders would, did not look at the vulnerabilities in their organization. So we spent time with the leaders in this organization. Again, the same process, we identified the key roles in the organization. We looked at who's waiting in the wings. Now, this is a really important point, ladies and gentlemen, is that you will find some people who are in the wings who really, you could think, yep, those are great people that we could grow and develop, but sometimes they're not there. And if they're not there, then finding them or recruiting them or looking outside of the organization is just a value, as valuable a part of the plan as is upskilling emerging leaders who are in the organization. So it's that robust plan around what do I need to do to make sure I've got the emerging leaders growing and developing. And if I don't have them, then I've got to find them and then start developing them. <clears throat> and obviously we expect help the executive and board members understand the importance of emerging leaders. I think most boards and CEOs do understand that. And obviously, you know, it needs resources and money and energy and investment to do emerging leaders. And I think my understanding or my sense around this is that the more we talk about it in various organizations, I can see the light go on, yep, that they can actually understand that this is what's important. So when we, I won't stay here too long, but a five-step succession plan really is to identify the critical positions, what are the skills people in those positions need, where are the successes, involve managers, and essentially grow and develop them. But even before that, really, if you want to put a plan or a stage before that is to, before they identify the critical positions in the company, you would even go back a stage and say, so what does the company need? What are the, what's the vision? What's the mission? What's the goals? What are we trying to achieve? And then obviously from that then stumbles out, okay, what are the critical positions? What do the people need? Find and assess potential successes, et cetera, et cetera. And now, it's as simple as that, and it, it can be as, as plain as this to actually just start to have some sort of emerging leader program coming into the organization. Oopsie daisy, sorry. So the six strategies to develop emerging leaders, as I said, one is to identify the roles, look down and across the line. The third slide, what sparks do people in the line have? I think that's always key for me when I'm asked, well, what should they have? And I always come back to, okay, they've got to be good at their jobs, the tasks, and they've got to have the ability to have great relationships. But you know what I look for is attitude. I'm really looking for those people who have got the can-do attitude, who are people who are consistently optimistic, who, who walk into the room and bring, you know, some sense of uh, direction, clarity, vision, who other people look up to, who are consistently pleasant and personable, who show initiative. I think that's great, initiative. You know, they've got the ability, they've got the availability, uh, that is, if they want to be grown, and they're enthusiastic. I absolutely love enthusiasm. I'd rather have, here's something I was having a debate about the other day, I'd rather have somebody in a role who's technically not very good, but, oh, my gosh, has the best attitude to try hard, than to have somebody who's technically absolutely a genius and has the wrong attitude, um, I don't like my job attitude and I hate my people attitude, I'd much rather have the person who struggles with competence but has the right attitude because I think you can always upskill somebody's competence in terms of technical ability, but I'm not sure you can always change people's attitudes. So that's my two bobs worth anyway. And then obviously discuss the person's plans with them to upskill them. That's a strategy. You must bring them in. Ask them where they want to go. Ask them what their hopes and plans are. And one of the things to always remember is don't always keep them in the line. So if you identify, for example, somebody who's really great in operations, don't think, oh, they can go up the operational line. Sometimes you can move them into, you know, I don't know, sales or marketing because they've got the personality. So think across the line and think down the operational line as well. 
and then to identify a career path for them with them. So, and then to, to obviously then to design an individual development plan for them, including in plugging them into a mentor. And think carefully about the mentor that you choose. A mentor needs to be somebody who's obviously more learned, um, somebody who would fit with them in terms of personality, somebody who's committed to their growth. A lot of the time when I see mentoring programs, the fit isn't right between the mentor and the mentee. And very often um, the, the kind of magic isn't there. And if the magic isn't there, I think my experience of mentoring programs for emerging leaders is that they tend to be more of a chore over time as opposed to a magical experience. And so that's a really important thing and to track and to measure progress. And so those would be the key things I would talk about, the strategies around developing emerging leaders. This is a, a, an organization that we worked with. Um, this is just obviously a bit of a <laughs> testimonial for us. Um, this was a very interesting organization. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful island. We had the opportunity to work in just off the mainland of Fiji, and we worked with him. He was the CEO, um, and he, we worked with his senior leaders, and we actually also then to help them identify some of their emerging leaders. And he initially thought, well, maybe we would have to get emerging leaders from outside the island, but actually when we sat down and had a look, there were some fantastic people on the island who we grew into the most amazing leaders. So that was just a really, really great story. Um, this is Viv Allenson. She was the CEO of the year in 2017. She was just an absolute treat, absolute treat to coach. Now, I've obviously just stuck her in there, but I just wanted to say something about her. She was a very, she's a very visionary woman, and she's a very visionary leader, and she's very, very committed to growing her emerging leaders. So she's always got plans for them and programs for them, and she moves them around a lot. So she'll move somebody out of finance and put them into sales and put somebody into HR and somebody into the clinical area. And she's got an organization in Newcastle that is just, outperforming most others, I would say, in the aged care facility because of her and the, the way that she's growing her leaders. So <clears throat> lots to think about. Um, I always like this question, you know, are you ready to take the next step? I think so often we go onto these programs and webinars and courses, but I think it's about do you want to see how things can be different for you or your team or your organization? I think very often we often think that these things are quite difficult to implement. I have I love the KISS principle, simple, simple, simple. You know, I think that so much money, effort and energy can be spent on highly, you know, designed programs and processes. And I think they might bring the rewards, but I also think very often that the more, more simple stuff is just as good as those things that are much more highly, you know, involved and more difficult to implement. So I'd like to offer five of you the opportunity of a one-hour one strategic review. Um, there's a lot more of you than that on the line, but that is the time trade. So one of two things, you can either write it down now and just book a time in, or my Rachel will send you a note after the seminar or after this webinar. Sorry to say, if you'd like to book in, you're very welcome to. But well, you might say, well, what is a strategic review about? So. What it's about is for me to discuss anything with you that you might want to discuss about your business. It could be uh, about your organization. It could be strategy, vision of your people, processes, disciplining, engaging people, performance appraisals, anything that you feel you would really like a little bit of help with. I'm very happy to give you an hour. And yeah, it's been absolutely wonderful to work with you. Um, some of the stuff we do... You're very welcome to go and have a look at our website. We run programs to obviously help you with emerging leaders, but also do leadership programs, team development. And you're welcome to go to our website, which is puremagicbusiness.com.au and download your free ebook. I love to see you online. I love for you to download the ebook if you would like to. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure. So what I would like to offer, do any of you have any questions now? Um, about emerging leaders and or anything really that you would like me to answer. Okay, so I've got a question here which is um, do you make the emerging leaders public? In other words, I think what you're asking me is 
in, if you're choosing uh, emerging leaders, are we going to tell everybody that they're on a fast track program? It's a really interesting question. And why it's interesting is because I think why would we not really? Because they deserve to be known to be high flyers. But I also think, you know, from a psychological perspective, it can be problematic in that other people in the organization might get resentful. Um, there could be some negative chatter. So I think it depends on the organization. But I certainly believe that that should not impact the fact that you're going to identify and develop your emerging leaders. Uh, my sense is to, I think I always say, do it discreetly, do it well. If people ask you who they are, then these are who they are. But I wouldn't be sort of, you know, blazing it across the organization. You know, Joe and Bob and Jim are the emerging leaders and let's clap them on. Because I think then it also creates a sense of, uh, you know, people feeling as if they're not as valued as others. I think it's also people not feeling as if they are you know, as well as respected as, as those who are identified as emerging leaders. So I think if you are going to do it, just do it respectfully. Do it well and do it respectfully. I think that's really, really important. There's another question here. How many emerging leaders should you have in any organization? Um, I don't think it's really about a quota system. It's more about how many critical roles do you have. So if you've got 10 critical roles, you should have a minimum of 10 emerging leaders plus more down under them even. Um, and certainly when you're recruiting people into, let's say, the bottom of an organization, even at that level, you know, you've got the managers down the line scout scouting for people who are, as I said earlier, who have got the spark. So those organizations who have great development programs or business succession programs have, you know, the, the pipeline filled at all levels of the organization. So let's just say you've got three levels in the organization then you've got three levels of the pipeline that are being filled and grown and developed so that as somebody at the top of the pipeline moves on, then the second line comes up and then the third line comes up to the second line, et cetera, et cetera. And so it goes. So you've always got this reservoir of talent that you're growing and developing and, and nurturing, if you like, to make sure that you can put them into those critical positions and ultimately the organization will thrive. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been such a pleasure working with you this morning. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you've learned something. I would really love to hear from you, love to answer any questions you may have and look forward to working with you in the future. So have a fantastic and beautiful Thursday. Take care. Bye.